Hi everybody and welcome back to our kitchen. Are you hungry? I've got a little treat for you here to use your leftover corned beef that you have for your St. Patty's Day dinner. And um, it's going to be low carb because I'm putting cauliflower in it and then some other vegetables. And um, I'm baking it in the oven so there's no oil or grease. And I hope you enjoy it. It's called uh, low carb corned beef patties gluten-free okay we're going to make patties out of our leftover um, corned beef from St. Patty's Day which was like day before yesterday and uh, I still have uh, rice cauliflower from the ham patties I did I'll link that recipe at the end of this video okay first of all we have to chop up our beef I'm not going to put it in a food processor like I did the ham. I'm just going to try to finally chop the corned beef. I don't want to obliterate it is what I don't want to do. And I'm doing it with all the cabbage and onions that were in here. And this should measure about two cups. I'll be right back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, I've diced it into small pieces and I want to take my knife and chop it finer than the small pieces. Just like this, you take your knife, chop, chop, chop. Keep moving it around to different places, going through your meat. This is what you do if you don't have a food processor. Okay, now let me get my bowl. Okay, um, I've go I'm going to take three cups of the riced cauliflower. Let me sit this down. This is an easy way, instead of using potatoes, which most people do a hash after St. Patty's Day, we're using the cauliflower instead of the potatoes. I'm going to sit this to the side. I may use it all. Now, I want a couple cups of the corned beef. And it's even got some cabbage in it which is great. I love cabbage. I'm just going to use all I have here again like I did in the ham. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay, let me wipe my hands. Stay where you're at. Okay, let's do our ingredients. I chopped up a quarter of a uh, red pepper and um, the only reason for the red pepper is to give it a little extra taste and color. Now if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I've done two eggs. In the last video, I did three. I think I'm probably going to have to do three because I added the extra meat. And uh, here we have minced onions, which I really love. I get these big bottles at Sam's Club and this has been about half a year. And this is a tablespoon of minced onions. You can use granulated, not a problem. You can use fresh as long as it's finely diced. Now I have the, of course, nutritional yeast that adds a cheesy flavor. It also helps bind these together. And if you don't have to use nutritional yeast, Parmesan cheese is just fine. Probably about a quarter of a cup in this case. I'm just only using two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast. And this time I'm going to add some pickle relish. If you're keto, you need to go sugar-free. And then I have a tablespoon 
of the ranch dressing mix that I made. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just use dill and um, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, I'm going to start stirring this up. I, like I say, I probably have to go to the third egg. But you don't know until you stir it up because the egg sometimes is hard to incorporate. See how I'm folding it over, down and over, and uh, I'm going to have to use that third egg. Okay, um, here's the third egg. I need it to hold this, these patties together. There's no breadcrumbs because uh, it's dairy free and of course it's gluten free so yeah this is going to work uh, when I dumped the um, red bell peppers in here I chopped up about a quarter cup of cilantro and that's our go to around this household if you don't like it or don't have it parsley is fine you can use dry parsley if that's all you have or even dried cilantro okay let me get this mess put away and I'll show you how we're going to make the patties okay here I've lined my cookie sheet with some no stick foil it's like my favorite you can reuse it if you need to but uh, you can oil the pan with that spray or you can actually use parchment paper now I want to take these um, patties that we're going to make. I just need a handful of them and I'm going to squeeze them together. Probably about the size of a small baseball. I don't know. That's what I was afraid of. They're falling apart. But we can fix that with our hands. That's why I don't pan fry these, is because you get too many vegetables in here and they want to fall apart when you're uh, turning them. So I figure baking them is the best way to go. And it turned out perfect when I did the ham. So I'm basically doing the same recipe here. Um, the only thing different is I put jalapenos in my last recipe. And, uh, darn, really is falling apart. Um, and, uh, this has more vegetables because of the fact that the corned beef was a little bit wet. It had the cabbage still in there from the dinner. And, uh, I'm going to squeeze them harder to see if that helps. Just to see. Just to see. And it's not helping. This is what happens when you cook. These are the pitfalls. But you know what? It all comes out good in the end. Woo! I'm throwing things all over the place, people. Okay. I don't want to waste this. I'm just going to put it with this guy. It doesn't really matter because it's all baking the same. Same time. 400 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of shape these. I know they're falling apart. But it doesn't have to be a disaster. It can be fixed. Just be patient. Use your hands. Your hands are the best thing God gave you. Um, comes in handy when you're cooking because sometimes a spatula or a spoon does, does just does not work. So I'm going to flatten these out a little bit more than I did the ham. But you see how they're coming together? 
Okay, I'm going to put these in the oven for 30 minutes, check on them, and if they're not done yet, I'm going to go to 40 minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, this is what they look like coming out of the oven. Um, they don't look so bad as, fa as far as fall falling apart. I'm going to take one off of here, and as you can see, it's not going to crumble. Um, I think baking is the way to go. Now, I mean, I'm making this into a brunch instead of a breakfast. You can make it any way you want with some fried eggs. Uh, I made some homemade Thousand Island, spicy homemade Thousand Island to put over the top. And I'm going to start with the eggs, the hard boiled egg that I have here. And I'll link the, or I haven't made a video for this yet, so I'll, I'll give you the ingredients at the bottom. Just get it all nice and cozy over there. And uh, this is what we end up with. Okay, um, beautiful dinner or brunch, lunch, whatever you want to make it. I'm going to go ahead and taste these bad boys. Whoops. Crunchy. The um, cauliflower is cooked all the way through. The Thousand Island dressing that I made gives a reminiscence of a Reuben sandwich. And there's a little bit of spice in it, just the way I like it. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, just to show you what you can do in your oven on one sheet. And um, be kind to your neighbor. I'll see you later. Bye.